Well, I mean, it was um, just thinking about how I was going, how was I going to announce that I was going to walk away from the game. And for the most part, you know, as athletes, we tend to think about that in terms of communicating that to the public or to fans. And um, but I realized I hadn't really had a chance to speak to the game itself. And and so I decided that was going to be my focus. And once I had that focus, the words came pretty quickly. I actually wrote two drafts within about 30 minutes. And the first one was more confrontational in nature because it felt like it felt like the game was trying to tell me you need me and you can't you can't walk away from this. You know, this is who you are. And so the first tone was more confrontational. It was like, no, I can I can walk away from you. I can do something without you, you know. And then like in every argument you kinda calm down and you start seeing all the beautiful things that you've learned from the game, which is the second draft that you know you guys hear now. Um, but I wanted to make sure it was visual. So it's easy to say, tell the game, I love you so much. But instead, I wanted to paint a picture with that. So if a kid is rolling his dad's stinky tube socks up, chances are you love the game enough to do that. You know, so it's trying to say things visually. And, uh, and fortunate enough, Dwayne King was uh, believed in a vision. And John Williams believed in a vision. And uh, turned it into an animated film. I grew up in Italy, okay? So, like, I didn't even know Oscars was the thing. Like, I, I didn't even, I had no idea, you know? And so um, when... Um, the nominations came out, we were nominated. It was like, oh, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty crazy. It's pretty insane. And then to actually win it, I remember winning and just looking at my wife and going, what the fuck? You know, it's just like, what? Okay, all right, this happened. All right, all right. And I remember after we won it, we got in the car. And, you know, it was like a late night, right? So we out hanging out and stuff. And it was like four in the morning, and, you know, we're in the car going back. And I look at my wife and I go, now we got to follow this shit up. But no, it's, it's been a fantastic experience. It's been wonderful. Um, but even more important than that, it was... I got a lot of funny looks my last year when people said, okay, what are you going to do when you retire? And I said, well, I'm, I'm going to be a storyteller. <laughs> okay, that's cute. What is that? Well, you know, I tell stories. Okay, all right. But so when you retire, you're going to go through different stages. You're going to be depressed the first week, the second week. And they would tell me this all the time. And so I felt like the nomination was a, was a, was a was validation that this thing is real. Like, you know, I can't do this. I do have talent other than... You know, dribbling and shooting the basketball. I can actually write. Yeah. Um, you know, I was, I think I was born to play, man. I started playing at like two years old. And my father wasn't one of these fathers that was like, you're going to play basketball. Or, you know, he wasn't one of those guys. It was just kind of, I was just around the game a lot. And uh, I gravitated to the ball and I was completely geeking out about like the smell of the ball and like the way it sounds when it hits concrete versus how it hits a parquet floor and like the sound of the nets and the different material of the nets and you know, there's certain basketball hoops, like in high school gyms and in college gyms, the rim sits slightly above the, the lower part of the backboard. And it was like, I was geeking out if I got into a gym, which was like the NBA with the lower stanchion of the backboard and the, um, and the hoop were completely parallel with each other. Like, I, like little shit like that would freak me out. Like, I, So to answer your question, I was born to do this thing, man. And, and I did it nonstop all day long um, from the age of two to when I retired, man. Sure. Well, no, I mean, it's, it's, you know, that's the trick, isn't it? It's, it's finding what you love to do. I mean, we talk about hard work all the time. It's like, you know, man, if you got to get up every single morning and remind yourself how hard you need to work, you probably need to choose a different profession, you know? Because that shouldn't be there. I, I wake up in the morning excited to get to it. You know, if I'm not training, I'm missing it. If I'm not watching a game of basketball, I miss it. I'm, you know, there's no place I'd rather be. And if you have that feeling, then you're truly doing what God has put you on this earth to do. Well, I mean, in, in business, it's a little different. Um, you know, it's, it's, I think the best way to prove your, your value is to work, is to learn, is to absorb, to be a sponge. But you always want to outwork your potential. You know, as hard as you believe you can work, you can work harder than that. And that's what I tried to do when I first came in the league. But you know, basketball is such a direct competition sport. And me coming in at 17, I hated when like, my teammates would say, you know, I get hit with an elbow. Like Shaq would hit me with an elbow in practice. And, like, Nick Van Exel would come up and say, are you okay? And Mao, are you okay? What the hell's wrong with you? You know, so like I always had that extra chip on my shoulder. So like every day in practice for me was really trying to annihilate everybody that was that I was playing against. So I wanted to prove you don't need to babysit me. Like I, I'm fine, <laughs> you know? And, uh, and so it's always that competitive nature, the work ethic and curiosity. Because I asked a lot of questions. You know, playing with Byron Scott, I asked him a lot of questions. Eddie Jones, who was great at chasing guards off the screens, and I didn't understand how to do that. I would sit with him before practice, after practice. 
Magic, James Worthy, Kurt Rambis, Kareem Abdul, all the Laker greats. I would always sit down and just ask them questions about certain games that I... slow as shit to me. I'm, I'm like, I'm missing something. So like, tell me what I'm missing. You know what I mean? And so I would always ask questions and try to learn as much as I could. I just dream. I dream. I have dreams and dreams is, uh, they should be pure. I, I think a lot of times when we we're born into this world, we actually wind up going backwards. And it seems like the more we mature, uh, the more responsible our dreams become and the more governors we put on ourselves and our ability to dream and to reimagine. And it's always a fight for us parents and you know, for you guys to make sure that your dreams always stay pure. And so it's not a matter of, of pushing beyond your limitations or expectations. It's really a matter of protecting your dreams, protecting your imagination. That's really the key. And when you do that, then the world just seems limitless. You know, I always dreamed as a kid that you know it was possible to score 80 or 90 or 100. I always just like, had a dream you know like sometimes you lay down in bed and you visualize things and you just kind of you know just that's how that's at least how i would go to sleep i'd lay down and i'd imagine playing for the lakers and i'd imagine what the uniforms look like i'd imagine where we'd be playing and you know the smell of the arena and all sorts of stuff and i would see myself you know getting hot you know and score 10 straight points and then but in the dream like why would you ever interrupt that? Like, you're not going to have a dream and be like, okay, then he misses his next six. Like, it's not going to happen. So you just keep dreaming and dreaming and dreaming. And before I go to sleep, I'm like at 120 points, you know? And so, and so when you grow up, downloading that into your brain over and over and over. And then, you know, that summer, I made a thousand shots a day. A thousand. <laughs> thousand shots and they weren't just shots it were shots that you saw in that game they were specific shots I mean it's coming out of the corner going to the pinch post footwork in the post coming off the screen it was very specific so when you download that into your system and you go out on the, in the court and you're just executing things that you've done thousands of times before and you have that dream then that becomes possible there's why reinvent it like I, I don't understand that you go out and play the game and you're just trying to create something new no no, this is what I do. This is what I do extremely well. You're going to have to stop me from doing that. And if you do stop me from doing that, I have a counter to that. Done. Um, my philosophy was a very simple one. I, um, and this is where I think film plays a big part of my life. I, you know, Rudy was one of my favorite films growing up. Um, but after watching that film, I come to understand if I could work that hard every day with the, being blessed with the physical tools that I have, what would my career be? And I made a promise to myself, 
from that day that I was going to work that hard every single day so that when I do retire, I have no regrets. And that was the most important thing for me is to leave no stone unturned, get better every single day. And if I lived that way, then over time, you know, I'd have something that was beautiful. But that was my philosophy. It seems like a pretty simple one, but, you know, if you live your life to just get better every single day and do that for 20 years, I mean, what do you have?